It's about time, huh? Well, I've heard people talk about this episode a lot. I mean, it doesn't matter if they think it's good or they think it's bad. They still talk about it. I mean, it's about time I got to this episode anyway. I mean, I wonder what my opinion would be about it. What the harmony? I uh, you me from the, the future. That is right. I am future you, and I come with a warning. I have so many questions to ask you about this. Dude, what do you think you're doing? So has the show got beyond the five season perimeter? Well, if you let me to deliver my message first. Has technology evolved since then? Seriously, mate, nothing has changed that much. Whatever achievements and not achievements has our wonderful society managed to conjure up as one magnificent hiney. It's only been like 30 minutes. Gosh, I have so many questions right now, except for the obvious question is like, how can you travel on time anyway? What? But that's not important right now. All I want to know is, how, what kind of music would I get involved in that would make it <laughs> that, now I got your attention, I can deliver the message for my grim future. No matter how you feel while you're watching this episode, no matter what your opinion is afterwards, no matter what the people will tell you afterwards, I am begging you for your future. Don't. <laughs> Don't what? It's about time. This is an episode that every brony, every Pegasus that talks about. But why? I mean, whenever Future Me showed up, it looked like he had real dire urgence in his cryptid message. Don't. Whatever is going to happen, it could all lead down to my opinion of this episode. Well, there's only one way to solve this. Explaining. So. Let's get this ice cream party started. This episode of Explaining His Magic has been brought to you by Bluebell Ice Cream. Now in a melt shoppe flavor. Mmm, tastes of chocolate salty balls. So, the episode starts with, ironically, Twilight getting a visit from her future self. Next Tuesday, and fails to receive a warning from that time that something horrible will happen. Gee, I've just seen a premonition from your future self as a common occurrence nowadays, isn't it? Also, Good use of that video game reference for future Twilight! <laughs> yes, the always beloved classic from our generation. Rayman. <laughs> anyway, <coughs> Twilight resorts herself to make a disaster-free Equestria by having every pony soil the landscape for any potential threats by continuing the run of home improvement. And no, I'm not gonna play that clip of Tim Allen barking like a dog. You can't make me. And that's got nothing to do with copyright whatsoever. I think it's overrated. Yeah, so you people don't have a chance in heaven and hell to- Okay, well, I guess there's no, um, inevitable de delayable anyway, so, uh, come on, come on, Clip, come on in. I know you want to show yourself to- so <laughs> Yeah, they actually threw Cerberus into this. About time, isn't it? <laughs> but that is quickly averted by copying the line scene from the series premiere. Either way, Fluttershy is just so fucking cute! I mean, cuteness is fine and all, there's no denying that it gains more viewers and figures, but... Why do people continue to watch this episode if nothing has happened? I mean, I know Twilight is confuzzled out of a giant mind over this, and you know what? What does that say about me? Come... Trigger muffled? I have to do something about this. I have to keep watching this episode. So no fun, no activities, no nothing out of me until this is done. Because I know there's something in there that makes it all worthwhile. 
Spike eating Ryer's ice cream. The new Gillette version. Now that is a running gag. Guarantee. Me personally, I prefer some Blue Bell ice cream, and it's always magnificent, great divide flavor. Which side are you on? Vanilla or chocolate? Come on, there's no strawberry in there. You gotta choose the two. There's no free fried roll in there. Also note that even though all evil has been prevented, the signs from future Twilight's body is slowly being foretold. The cut on her face, the eye patch, the bandage, and the funky hairdo. Intriguing? Yes, but I'm more worried about the constant future Twilight and future Spike talk in between events. No! Well, at least compared to the last episode's all old and new banter, this is at least tolerable. And since I love the Twilight and Pinky pairing for the Feeling Pinky King episode, here it is again! And just as silly as ever! Enter, O oh seeker of knowledge! <laughs> That's you, fathead! Meep! So, it's the day before Tuesday. <laughs> that should be its own movie title or something. And the signs are coming true, and nothing has been prevented. So Twilight comes to one solution. Stop. Time! Seriously, that's how she even says it. Stop. Time. I'm gonna stop time as well. You can't stop me, audience. This is the only way. This is the only way! Ah! Okay, problem solved. On we go. So, Twilight, Pinky, and Spike break into Cantalot's castle to search the archives in order to find a spell to stop time. <laughs> I'm never gonna get tired of that. Sneaking around without wanting to be seen by the guards. All I'm thinking during this is. Rayman was never sneaking! <laughs> oh, except for in Hoodlum Havoc, but who cares about that? They make it to the archives with one brilliant plan to find the stop timing spell? I don't know. Yeah, that's a good line, but that doesn't help. Stop, stop time! Oops, too late. It's Tuesday morning. Bye, everybody! Nice to see you on the show and a nice run! <laughs> where, where, where are the ending credits? Wait. Was there no real disaster to begin with? Has friendship is magic trolled us? Is the lesson for this episode not to let the future get to you and just let the pleasant flow its magnificent course? Very good, you dumb British man! For that, you get the good try sticker! You dumb shit! I mean, talk about the expected and the unexpected come at the same time, right? <laughs> Revolution of the disaster would have a bigger twist at the end and result in a more epic payoff, but nope, it's all connected to events very nicely, and it's just how it is. Really, you would think that all these other time travel stories that you would get from other shows would be inevitable anyway, right? I mean, imagine if the whole android saga from Dragon Ball Z was handled like Goku, you have to listen to me. A grim future is coming where nobody survives and evil reigns. So, whatever happens, no matter what it takes, don't do anything! No! But you know, all this build up, all this hype, all this praise, it wasn't entirely worth it, nor did it matter anyway. The episode was still good, great even, but it is what it is, and nothing more. The end jokes are cute, and even the third act was suspenseful in a sense. But it's just that, and nothing more. Yeah, I think I can let go of the obsession and move on into more episodes. That's what future me would have wanted. Although, I still need to warn my past self that this episode really wasn't worth the hassle. Thank God for convenient iPod apps. Oh, that's right. I didn't have the iPod to read the script for this episode. There we go. All throughout this recording, though, I get the feeling that something else was supposed to happen today. It, not the episode, but something else. And as a matter of fact, how come the future me looked all futuristic, weird, and the present me hasn't changed at all? I've still got my regular costume on. Maybe... the future hasn't changed at all. Maybe by 2054, it'll still be the same thing. Have we really evolved as human beings? What are we going to become? That ah, bugger, I'm gonna get the weirdest accessories out of my wardrobe.
I am future you. And I come with a warning. I have so many questions to ask you about this. Dude, what do you think you're doing? So has the show got beyond the five season perimeter? What if you let me to deliver my message first? Has technology evolved since then? Seriously, mate, nothing has changed that much. Whatever achievements and not achievements is our wonderful society you managed to conjure up as one magnificent hiney. It's only been like 30 minutes. Gosh, I have so many questions right now, except for the obvious question is like, how can you travel on time anyway? What? But that's not important right now. All I want to know is, how, what kind of music would I get involved in when I would make it? <laughs> your attention. I can deliver the message for my grim future. No matter how you feel while you're watching this episode, no matter what your opinion is afterwards, no matter what the people will tell you afterwards, I am begging you for your future. Don't forget your birthday! What? It's... It's my birthday today? No. No! 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 The future wasn't me involved in this episode at all! It was just me celebrating my birthday, which only comes once a year! No! No! I'm going to be so stupid! I didn't know! Thank you for watching today's episode. Now, in the spirit of having ice cream for all, and from the precious container there, I think the most delightful treat after watching such a fine episode is almost certain. Chili rice. Why did I make that 500 degrees? Ugh.